solution I come up with for Phil and I is hippies with money.
What we're going to do for you now is sing, because that's why we're here. We're going to dig back into our past, travel down memory lane, and do one of our pre-war records for you. <laughs> to give you an idea of this song's age, they banned it in Boston because it had the word sleep in it. <laughs> they were banning five-letter words a few years ago. It's a perfectly innocent little song now by today's standards. In fact, it's so innocent it shouldn't be up so late, but uh, we're going to drag it out and sing it anyway. You're in a position to influence an awful lot of people. I don't think it's my, uh, 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 I don't think I have the right. Uh, I don't, also don't think I'm, uh, uh, I just don't believe I have the right to, uh, I think people should form their own opinions and inform themselves. Do you think, do you think that, um, kids want you to, um, sing protest songs and anti-government songs and things? It's very, uh, very convenient. Uh, to, to sing protest songs and, uh, and uh, be like, it's a good way to get a lot of attention. People are much more interested in something controversial than they are something, uh, uh, s s you know, a straight line. Uh, but I'm, I f I'm a firm believer in, in, in democracy. I, mean, I think I am the government, you know, and I, I'm responsible for what is happening in the United States. I'm responsible for be us being in Vietnam. Uh, and uh, the systems we have here, you have the one you have here and the one we have in the United States, you can vote. You have a voice in it. You have a responsibility. Um, you can't get anywhere by uh, uh, saying that it's all their fault because it's us. Because I went to the polls. I, I voted and I, uh, you know, I have, you, have to take, you have to share that as you share the good things and the good freedoms. You have to share the, the, uh, the bad things that the country is involved in.
Listen to it again. Yeah, I hear a train coming. Who? That's an illusion. It's, it's an illusion. That's just a song. I don't really sound like Johnny Cash. Phil and I grew up in country music. In fact, we started out working with our mother and father. When I was about seven years old and Phil was five, we started on radio, singing along in gospel quartets and such. We were known as the Everly family because we all had the same last name, Everly. I thought it was a pretty good name for the group. Much better than the Four Tops or something like that. Anyway, we sang with the family right up until Phil and I recorded a song, late 50s, and it became a hit, so we fired mom and dad went out on her own. Actually, Dad's working with us again. He's not with us tonight, unfortunately. But uh, if you happen to be in Vegas about three weeks from now, <laughs> do drop in the landmark. <laughs> oh, I hate it there. It's nice, though. Dad's going to be with us, and we're going to be singing and playing. The reason I bring this up is we're going to sing some country music for you now. Good. Mm -hmm. 
I guess you've noticed our illustrious group back here, the Tabernacle Three. We're very proud of them, and we're going to introduce them to you now individually. On guitar. Well, he's not really on it. You'll notice he's standing behind it. On it's kind of a showbiz term. We're going to tell him about your education, just to give the act some class. <laughs> People sometimes think that maybe you spent all your time practicing guitar that you didn't go to school, see? That's not so. Our guitar player, the fellow standing right there, has a master's degree in physiological psychology. It's true. All he has to do is get to his dissertation and he'll have a doctorate. He majored in amphetamines, the chemistry of amphetamines. This is true. Chemistry of amphetamines. We're very proud of that. Which is more fun, physiological psychology or funky guitar? Funky guitar, that's where it's at. <laughs> Bob Warford. <laughs> really, really a fine guitar player. Our uh, regular drummer is with us tonight. Our substitute drummer couldn't make it this trip. So we got the, re the regular one with us. And undoubtedly the finest drummer in the group. <laughs> How about a nice hand for Tiny Schneider and his bang bangs? <laughs> and the bass player. No. Last but not least. Every group has to have a bass player, and we do think we have one of the bassest ones available in modern music. Bless his heart. How about a nice hand for Bob Kay and his bass? And they're happy to be here. <laughs> okay, now that you've met the group, we can go on to other things. Uh, we're going on to sing along, as a matter of fact. It's sing along time. If you happen to know some of the words to the next song, you're invited to join in and sing along. If you don't know the words, if you like dancing, I see there's some room in the aisles. It's a fast fox trot. It's a very fast fox trot. If you're going to dance, I recommend you start now. No one ever dances anymore. All right, ready, set, sing!
after 15 years, you know, you're really up and sort of like Presley and Sinatra have been going that long and that's about all. Can you really see a limit to your career or an end or somewhere where you're going to have to change? Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, I think if I could see a limit, an end to it, I'd, I'd be terribly frightened and uh, uh, I'd probably be looking around to get another profession or do something. I, I don't believe you, you'll ever see an entertainer that sees an end to his career. I don't care. Uh, if you're successful or not. I just don't think that's part of the nature of the uh, entertainer. If it was, I don't think he could entertain. But you'd, you'd agree that it's pretty incredible that you've been there so long. It uh, sounds like a judgment. <laughs> uh, uh, it, how, do, how do you explain any, anybody's longevity? You know, how come uh, people stay? Uh, and you never know how, uh, you never know why you're even successful, you know? And you can't figure out why you continue to be successful. I, I have no idea why people wanted to hear us in the beginning. And I still don't. You going to uh, make your five-year-old boy a singer, or are you going to tell him to keep well away? No, I'm going to try to make him a man. And not let him do anything, whatever he wants. Uh, what are you going to do when you're really old and your voice starts cracking? Uh, continue to get older and let it crack. I'm not going to worry about it. What's what? your favorite song? Uh, let it be me. I bless the day.
You've had about 50 hit singles and you started off uh, really having big hits when you were 17. Have you tried to change your music very much since then or are you sticking to the one formula? Well, it's the industry, this, you change your sound when it's necessary. I think I, if you can change your sound, which I'm not sure you can even change your sound. I mean, you can change your backup and you can change your songs, which we did. But uh, there's no conscious effort to do something to uh, uh, conform to what uh, appears to be happening. Because if anything, what appears to be happening is more in the vein of what we were doing. Is there any difference of musical opinion between the two of you at all? Oh, I think that, uh, yeah. But I think that's within, between any individual, you know. Everybody has their own personal uh, favorite thing. thing. Was this the reason why you brought out a, an LP of your own? Yeah. yeah. Did you actually split then, or, and you've now reformed, or no, was it just... No. We worked, that, that album was done while we were doing the television show. Pr part of it was. So. The measure now is LPs. You've had 50 hit singles, but in fact, nowadays people tend to regard LPs as being the, the, main, our main, the main... Our main source, there's not that many uh, selling right now as LPs. But do you think, in fact, the whole climate's changed, in other words? I think, the, uh, uh, I agree, I think that the, uh, as I understand the question, the, uh, the LPs are the largest percentage of the market now with, with almost all your companies. And you're bringing out a new one in the future, is that right? We're changing labels and uh, we're going to RCA and we, our next project will be a... An LP. Are you going to be changing music at all now that Don has sort of gotten away a little from what you were doing before? Well, I don't before? know. The, uh, uh, I think we're both going to, it's going to be uh, uh, whatever it'll be. You know, you really don't know anything until you do it. Uh, the we're new going our new, Ross Charles, yeah, so. We have a new producer and our new contract at RCA calls for singles by, uh, albums by Donald and by me. And, and when we do one together, that's what we're going to be doing. Will you be writing any of your own stuff? Uh, quite a bit, I think. Which you haven't done in the past. Well, we have any, uh, and uh, very, we've written a lot, but we haven't always done them, you know. Where do you see the main part of your audience at the moment? Is it people who have grown up with you, or are you now aiming sort of young again? I don't know. That with the television show, I think the television show played here. The, uh, in the United States, the audience is, is just sort of picked up again as uh, being all ages again, and we've retained some of the old, uh, older fans, who, and uh, maybe we lost a few, I don't know. But, uh, and then you pick up some new ones with the, uh, with the television show, younger ones. Now that groups are breaking up and single artists are becoming the big thing, do you think there's going to be a, a resurgence of interest in the Everly Brothers as a, as a duo? I don't know. I think it all depends on how good your product is. How good do you think yours is? I don't know. 